Ben Pearson, Super Jet, was from the 50s and was originally called Model Number 335. And it soldiered on this wave through the mid-60s. And in 1968, for some reason, Ben Pearson put a zero at the end of all their model numbers. It now became the Model 3350. And it stayed this way with minor changes to the handles and things like that through the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and finally disappeared from the Ben Pearson catalogs in the early 1990s. Hey everybody, you know, <laughs> if you know me, if you've seen any of my videos, I use one type of bow, Ben Pearson's, and they don't even make them anymore. So you've seen my video, hopefully, on the jet bow. Well, I used them with the people and they worked great, but there's those people that wanted more. You know, and I don't want to give a bunch of beginners good wooden bows they could break. So I went out and bought these. These are the Super Jets. And same thing, these are 30 pounders. And so I don't have to use gloves. I'd highly suggest you guys use these, these finger savers for kids. You know, they grab them and like that. I'm not doing anything special to them. Not, didn't even clean them up. I just let them use it like they are. Got them in last minute. That's the first one. And here is my second one. Right here like this. You know, they're almost identical. The uh, labels which you'll see in the pictures are totally different. But the big thing again, once again, Knox. Two different designs. You know, these are definitely, besides the print would tell me different um, production batches. But they found something, they changed something for some reason. Maybe they changed them just to change them? I don't know. You know, these things are pretty good. They got some oomph to them. You know, uh, I go to a dude ranch and they have one. And that one there has been shot and never unstrung for 20, 30 years. And that thing's still going strong. So we're going to take it and run through my battery of test. Dating the two bows, one's easy, the other is next to impossible. On this bow right here, it's easy to date. Because in the early days, Ben Pearson would change his logo every couple of years. And what you do is you always look at the arrowhead. And this arrowhead was used in two years, 1968 and 1969. So that one's pretty simple. And the model number confirms it because that's the year they added the zero on it. Now this other one, starting around 1970, they started using just looks like a two little feather thing, and that can do it on forever. So that one there, that's next to impossible to date. All right, here we go, poundage testing. I already warmed it up, so don't think I'm gonna beat on it. Right now it's rating about two and a half pounds. That's just my scale. At 26, I'm just shy. At 28, it's almost spot on. Yep, about 30 pounds, a little bit more, almost about 32 to 33 pounds. Not bad, a little more powerful than I thought. After I filmed the last one, I noticed the weight on the bow said 35 pounds. I totally forgot about that. And I said it was 32 to 34. Put it on there again. My scale doesn't have single digits, it goes by twos. So what I thought was 32 is actually 34 to 35. So it was spot on. So let's try this one. All right, same spot where the other one is. Yep, a two, four, yep, 35 pounds. Not bad, pretty accurate. And she looks like she's holding a pretty nice tiller. All right, so we know what that is. Now let's go put them on the chronograph. All right, now that we put her on the poundage, we know that it's accurate. We're going to take some shots and check the speed of it. You know, I have the finger savers, so I don't need a glove, thank goodness. One twenty-one. You know, I'm not getting full draw out of this one. Try to pull a little more. Oh yeah, there you go. One thirty-seven. One forty-one, not bad. You know that was that full draw, so I, I would take one forties would be about a you know good number for this. All right, let's try the second one. All right, here's the second one, which I believe is a newer one. 
just by the logo on it. All right, let's see how she shoots. One forty-two. One forty-four. One forty-one. So one forty is where she's at, just like the other one. You know what? It was pretty quick. Very little hand shock. I'm actually surprised. I've actually fired long bows, wooden ones with more hand shock than this one. All right, let's move on to the next test. All right, here I am in my basement, my 30 pounder. You know, and I'm not shooting for accuracy. I'm just gonna shoot it and give you my impressions. When I was shooting for the speed, I was just thinking about that. But now I can relax my mind and just give you some basic impressions of how it shoots. Laser straight. Minimal hand shock. I heard more of it than I felt in it, and I didn't even check the brace height on it. Um, stack. Definitely stack at the end. I can feel it. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Ooh, now it's picking up. Yeah, around that 26 to 28, that stack really comes alive. The amount of effort required to pull it back greatly increases. Now, I, you know, that's not bad. Not really aiming. And I put three of them in a group like that. You know what? Not bad. Pretty good. Let's try the next one. All right, here's the second one. Once again, not shooting to try to hit anything, not trying to show off. Just shooting it, giving me impressions. 'Once again, laser straight, a little more hand shock, nothing that would bother you, and a lot less stack, a lot less. And that one was right on the bullseye. 11 o'clock, a little off. There you go, dead on the bullseye. You know, it's funny, I felt the feather touch my nose. Once again, you know what, a little bit of hand shock, for the price, these babies can't be beat.